permitted to attack. Okay. So I need only five minutes. So you start. I will come. I will come. Five, seven minutes. Me, Raita, submit. Hello. Abhi nahi. Kya bolte hai? You are taking the first talk, na? Ye bhai talk then, but 20-25 minutes ho jaye. Ha, theek hai. Chalega. Chalega. I am there till ten o'clock. I will follow you. There is no problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good evening. My name is Rishika Otherim. Uh, I have made a post, sir. You can see my slide. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll start. Yes, sir. Olecranon fractures avoid day one failure. See, this is the standard treatment which we give for olecranon, where the things go intramedullary. If it goes, this has a tendency to come out. And conventionally, this wire is looped around the circlage wire. Is it is really looped around the K wire? But what is recommended is this. The circlage wire should be inside the K wire onto the bone rather than the K wires. So it is. This is what is been recommended. Make two cuts here. Put the K wires, pass the K wires, and push them inside afterwards. Two cuts in the tricep. Push the wire in the bone and introduced. And now put in the circlage wire either through the wire there or even even you can put the circlage wire here there is no problem for that and you see two knots is supposed to be better than one knot and these wires have to come out anteriorly and since it is inside the tricep it will not it will not be able to come out very much even if it is straight but it has to come out a little more anteriorly if it is inside the medullary cavity, it has a tendency to come out. So that's the reason why if it is inside the, it is piercing the anterior cortex, then there is no problem. Long intramedullary wires also will not come out in the, under the triceps, which is better. Now, this is how it is. These are the picture, one loop or two loops. You can see two loops is supposed to be the better one than the one loop. And here is the one which you're pushing it through. And when you go, you got to see that it is not going on to the radius side. When it goes anteriorly, it shouldn't go to the radius side. We'll come there. And I do not like the screws because the screw, when you compress, if the screw is jammed here and the steel that has not been compressing, that means there will be a distraction at the fracture side. So the screw is a hit and a miss situation. And as you can see, when you put in the screw, the screw is jammed here. And when you tighten it, actually it opens out. That's the reason why it is not advisable with the doing with the screw all the time, which may work, may not work. It entirely depends upon the medullary cavity where the screw is biting. Now, here was the patient communicated fracture of the olecranon, and the surgeon did this intramedullary wire and the tension bend and circlage wire. Excellent. Excellent fixation, excellent uh, reconstruction of the olecranon was done. But they were intramedullary wires. And so in due course of time, those intramedullary wires came out. Once they came out, the whole thing became completely unstable. And this is what it came to me ultimately. This is the stage I came to see. You can see they also excised the ulna. I excised the head of the radius. So it, this is the hook plate which I had devised long back. Just a minute. Yes, Raul. Hello. Hey. 
एक्सरसाइज करे थे नहीं एल्बो नहीं एल्बो Tension bit is all is not always ideal. Plate may be better for such fracture. This is the fracture. Surgeon tried to do the tension man here, which is not good enough for this fracture, which I showed. This was also not good enough for this. Also, is not good enough. Now, this is the plate of the olecranon. This is the fractures which need the plating. So, as you can see, this is the hook plate. Then I am I am doing the tensioning here. This is with the Muller device. I am doing the compression first, the detraction. then holding this fragment and then the compression distraction and then the compression and the whole fracture is fixed it up and this is the one which heals up this is the one which ultimately the the design which was that this is what somebody made it which is not good enough but even if you put that you can put this one screw which is the one which is going to hold well and other screw must reconstruct the anterior anterior border there and probably a one more screw here would have been much better this screw holds the best confirm with the cm can you let here how you can do it is put in a guide wire confirm then put in a cannulated drill and then put in the screw this is the way in which you can bite it perfectly well now here you can see that this was the fracture where the perfectly thing first and the foremost is this fracture screw so when you do this leg this up this is the most important screw which is going to really give you the perfect reduction and the joint reconstruction so once having done now the, this is the evo plate which has come up and you can put this screw there this is the one which gives you the best possible fixation there and as you can see patient has a full range of movement you can get So, olecranon fracture tension band is not the always the issue for this sort of a thing. Tension band is not an ideal situation, and this anteriorly, this fracture which is there, so the the, the olecranon fossa has to be reconstructed perfectly well, and then only you will get a good range of movement there. Now, such a badly comminuted fracture which is there, till you can really all what you need is the first is this is the screw. reconstruct the olecranon fossa then all these are the screws which will come and you will be able to really ultimately such a comminuted fracture also you will this is the coronoid leg screw is the most important screw and the leg screw so you reconstructed the the elbow joint and you can see here this is the one after that you can get a good healing process and an excellent range of movement is achieved so you can get at one year time everything is healed up and this is the range of movement you get the incision is not on the coronoid but it is around the coronoid all elbow incisions also i take it like this now here is the fracture as you can see this is the olecranon fracture and also the upper end of the ulna so this is what was treated with this ordinary recon plate screws but this is the screw this is the most important screw this is the one and there was a separate plate for this so this is the one in three months time you can see excellent range of movement which is there and he can do the flexion extension supination pronation perfectly all what you do is this is the main screw put in a leg screw here then other things are new neutralizing things and once you have put in this leg screw and fixed it up perfectly well now you have only neutralized the things and then it will be fine this is as you can see these are only the k wires which have been doing the job or probably these are the very thin in screws probably now here it is you can see the ideal thing is this this is the screw which you must first fix it up with that now here you can see here excellent range of movement which you can see 
in this patient. Now here was again the cumulated olecranon. So cumulated olecranon, this is the one which is giving you the fixation. And then all these are the two leg screws which are doing the job. These are supplementary wires. And then three leg screws doing the job, one, two, and three. This is badly combinated factor, you can see. And that's the reason why ultimately the thing will become all right. This is still more communicative. And still more communicative, reconstructive force support. Here, there was in, it wasn't possible to, there was all sorts of very, very badly communicative radius. So there was nothing which was done. This is the piece, I think, of a radius. But this is the way it was fixed it up. But now you see here, this electron plate of AO. This is where it is floating above the about the bone. This everything became all right. This is the incision which I am talking about. So if you want to push in, if you want to put it over the electron or over the triceps, it will always be like this. So in order to put it back, I cut the triceps. I put the plate underneath the triceps and push back the triceps. This is the way in which the plate will be right underneath the thing. So here is the one. Again, this is the hydroxy appetite. This is the leg screw. This is the leg screw. Ordinary recon plate. And then still the things become perfectly all right. And you will have a good range of movement. Here was the comminuted fracture. You can see once I opened it up, I realized that it is a badly comminuted and it is a vertical fracture like this. So here was the fracture surface. So ultimately all we did was the leg screws. Once you did the leg screws, all the fractures became in good position. Now the neutralizing plate, you can see these are the leg screws and the neutralizing plate and the things become perfectly all right. The range of movement and everything comes back. Now this is the type of a fracture. This is not an olecranon fracture. This is actually the upper end of the ulna fracture. So for this fracture, olecranon plate is too thin. I think it is a thin plate. So this is not the good plate for this sort of a fracture. This is this olecranon plate is all right somewhere here in cancellous part. Once cortical part it comes, it's not a strong enough plate and this is not good enough. So you can see it broke down. So ultimately how I, I treated this was, this broke down. Now you can see this is only unicortical screws and this is the thin plate. So I went down, I put in a plate on the side so I could get bicortical purchase. Plate is not over here, but plate is on the side. So I could get bicortical purchase. I compressed it here and thicker DCP on the side of the ulna to get a good bicortical hole approximately. This is onto the dorsal surface while this plate is onto the side. And you can see this is the one which will give you a good fixation. So all these are the ones which are there. Now you can see the olecranon in one year time. Now, so you see the, the slides, slides, are, slides are not shown. Always the slides are not shown. They will be onto the olecranon. Slides. Oh. Internet. I see I'll well, try to come back. If I can come back, that's fine. Otherwise, you start afterwards. Five minutes, just wait for me. Sangi? Yes. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. We can take any questions till the time. Yeah. Uh, one thing I don't know whether it's have covered or not. That hole in the ulna for a tension band should be at least about 2.5 centimeter from the fracture margin. 
it should be away. And second, it should be in the mid axial line of ulna. People tend to make that hole very close to the dorsal surface. There was a paper in CORR which showed that if you make it very close to the dorsal surface, when patient will flex, the fracture may open on the anterior side. So it should be at least mid axial. I mean, uh, in the center of the circumference. In the center of, of the, the ulna. Yeah. The circumference of the ulna. Yeah. Yeah. And it shouldn't be very close to dorsal surface. Yes. Yeah. The leg screw that was uh, trying, that should be through the plate or uh, with the. Let uh, us through, is through the plate. It's usually the, through the plate uh, for the coronoid. For coronoid, the, yeah. Then, then only your plate will sit because the coronoid, why he's insisting on coronoid, that is the strongest bone. Uh, rest of the uh, rest all uh, the uh, proximal ulna is all cancellous so you get a solid hold when you pass it through the plate so that reduces the plate to the uh, greater sigmoid notch that means the olecranon completely plus when you are reconstructing this uh, olecranon fossa you can err on the slide side of slightly widening it either do a perfect reconstruction or it can be slightly widened, shallow, but it can't be narrowed. If you narrow it down, you will not get the range. So these two and screws are most important. One is the one which is passing to the coronoid and second is the kickstand screw that is going intramedullary from the first or second hole of the plate. Along, along. Uh, Along the, along, the long medullary canal, along the medullary canal, touching the anterior yeah. cortex. Right, 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 yeah. right. And that kick stand screw, you should not pass more than, say, 45 or 50. Because if you choose the 60 or 70, then it hampers placement of your distal fragment screws. So choose around, say, 40 to 50. Don't take it 60, 70. You can pass it 60, but don't try to do that. And one of the Indian companies, I have forgotten the name, but uh, uh, synthesis plate and all the copies, they come in 3.5 and all the plates which Saab is showing are 3.5 locking. The, that fellow has made a 2.4 locking olecranon plate. So it's a very strong plate, far uh, more economical than synthesis and is almost less than half the price. And Proximal screws are all 2.4. So you get multiple, multi-directional, nice, good locking screws in the small olecranon fragment also. I have used about four of them. It's beautiful. And one more company, Indian company, has copied olecranon plate, which is a copy of a Zimmer plate. So that also fits very well it's a very low profile but a strong plate. So that's in a steel and the other one is 2.4 is in uh, titanium only. It's not in a steel. So approximately from say 13, 14 to 25, 28, something like that. But they are far, far better than 3.5 plate. You do it in lateral position, sir? Or in supine? The very comminuted ones I used to do in the lateral position with the arm hanging, but off late, I'm hooked on to a position. I'll send the photo uh, in the WhatsApp group also. Uh, my patient hand is on the side like this. It's like yeah. this on the side, on the side table, so I can do imaging very nicely. And then there is a board here across the chest of the patient. So my uh, arm is here. So I can work here, do anything to the olecranon, see the head radius here, uh, as if I'm operating in the supine position, but the comfort is there. And the moment I want to image something, I just put it on the side table. Okay. Because in the lateral position, imaging is really difficult. It's very difficult. When side table is applied, then uh, do you not have any difficulty to stand there? No, no. I'll show you the uh, picture. I've got a Please. picture in one of the presentations. So I'll send the picture. It's in the AO manual also. AO references, surgical references, it is there, that position. Okay. So we have combined two, side table 
and the board across the chest, which is fixed there. So the arm is kept like this. Yes. So you can work here. Yes. If it's in a lateral position, Neji. Yes. So it's supporting with the radiolucent substance. Yeah. Like yeah. The pillows. G. G. Position also you'll be able to do the exactly the same image what you are doing. Yeah, yeah, yes, the expensive models they have got that radiolucent uh, blocks and other things. Yeah, I think you can put many pillows and yeah. you stack it up with the with the sun sticking material. G. So they use yeah. that. And in the same position, the hang is the whole thing is uh, hanging down. Anyway, whichever position you, you choose, it is the position in which you can do where you got to have a Good visualogical, good, good radiological control. More the combination, more is the indication for lateral position. More complex the fracture, more is the indication for uh, lateral position. Okay, I'll just finish my talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is the one which I am talking about. Can you see my slide, extension of the commutative piece? Yes, sir. It is uh, another operation which is not being done very frequently. If this is the piece in a osteoporotic patient, tip fracture like this, extension of these fragmented commutative distal end fractures in a select group elderly. With less than 50 percent, I think generally it should be only more, only about 20 to 25 percent. Osteoporotic too small and too comminuted to fix. An excision of this piece, which is going to be giving you the same result as you can do it for any other fracture. And this is the way in which you can do it. You, you go down, open it up. You, you make the triceps flat. Open up the tricep slab. Now the tricep flap is opened out and you have this fracture patella which has come into that flap. Now you go down and excise this flap. Once you excise this flap, put this triceps back. Put this triceps back and stitch it up. And once you put it up and stitch it up, it's going to really be same operation which you will be able to do. You stitch it up. Facial uh, flap is replaced. Ulnar nerve is transplanted anteriorly if you need it, which is nowadays not really needed. This is the way you can do it. And put these things for comparatively more anteriorly than posteriorly. So after excision, the triceps are attached adjacent to the articular surface. And this is the one which will give you a good flexion extension control there. Info and Howard 31 reported good excellent results in 11 out of 12 patients with adequate follow-up after excision of as much as 70% of the articular surface. This is a real too much, but into the real elderly community, this can be done. Arm pouch or a temporary post of plaster is supposed to be for the pain two days and they start active mobilization exercises. Arm pouch is kept for 10 to 15 days. No passive mobilization movement take four to six months to recover. Last 10 degree movement may not be re regained. Other fractures now is this tip of the olecranon fracture. There is a tip of the olecranon where the central tip of the triceps is overing it out and it is like this. This is the one which is also missed quite a lot, small chip with the central tendon triceps split. Loss of subtle power of extension. If left alone, CT MRI diagnosis, clinically also you can diagnose and tension made through the osteotendinous junction is a treatment of choice. Now you can see the some fracture like this. If you think this is a small fracture, but it has an attachment of the tendon. And I remember once I had left alone saying this is a small piece. And for him, last power of extension, he could not get. That power he couldn't get. So he could ultimately carry on the things, but the power didn't come. You can see here. Recording. Is it clicking yeah. red? No. Yeah, it's clicking red. Recording is done. Well, that's it. Okay. Now, the just touch screen ke upar.
वो जो स्क्वेयर बटन है ना नहीं नहीं दस The conclusion: the tension pain is ideal, most fulfilling. Two look prefer K Y S in anti cortex ideal, but not always possible. Early backtracking of the K Y S, plating when required, there is no option. An excision is undergo utilized, and a small avulsion fracture. Do not miss it. You will be able to get them stitched up, and you will get a much better function afterwards. Okay, if any. Questions. We can ask the question now, and otherwise, I'll hand over to Asim to start off with the sphere fracture. Any questions on olecranon? Any questions on olecranon? Ah, uh, sir, two questions. Hello. Yeah. Hello. What the what the approach you use here? Posterior medial. Carry on, Nitin. Ha. Ah, uh, regarding the sir, uh, in during tension band wearing, you said that if you put the uh, K wires in the medullary canal, there are more chances of the uh, the of those coming out during the movements. But uh, sir, uh, my experience is if you turn them. 180 degree proximally, and if you hammer them through the trochanteric uh, this thing, olecranon tip, uh, usually they don't come out, sir. After splitting the triceps, if you put it in the bone, and if it is behind the inside the triceps, if you put a slit in the thing and put it inside the tricep, then the chances and, are less. But still, and, but still, it has a possibility of coming out while the while it is biting the anterior cortex, it will not come out. uh another thing sir uh, regarding the cancellous screw 6.5 mm if we uh, many of the times i have pre did pre drilled that uh before doing the olecranon osteotomy and i have tapped it with the 6.5 uh, cancellous tap and later on i put the screw of 100 to 100 mm if the tap is uh, fixing nicely then the screw also fixes nicely and it has got a very good uh, purchase in the uh, uh, during the reduction of the osteotomy sir If the medullary cavity is big enough where the screw can bite, then you will get a good compression. But not all the time you will get the screw biting in the medullary cavity. So some of the cases which I showed where the screw was not biting, it is always drill, tap, and then the screw is put partially threaded so that you can compress it. But it has to bite in the medullary cavity. If it is too, if it is too small, then it will not bite. If it is too big, then again it will not be able to go through. But the leg wise, it should be minimum hundred hundred mm, sir. Yeah. Then the, it will have purchase in the distal fragment, sir, distally. Okay. Okay, Nagi, carry on, please. Yes, sir. Friends, we are going to talk about shear fractures of capitulum and trochlea. they contribute 1% of the elbow injuries and 6% of the distal humeral fractures females are more likely to have them because of increased carrying angle and osteoporotic bones axial compression while falling with elbow semi flexed or hyper extended can lead to a shear fracture of distal humerus or it can occur after spontaneous reduction of a posterior lateral subluxation or dislocation associated injuries to lateral collateral ligament is common in almost 40% and 30% of these patients can have head radius fracture so always and always examine any elbow after a reduction for stability radicular capitular articulation 
is formed by distal humerus, head radius, and proximal ulna. LUCL is an important part of uh, this complex for longitudinal and valgus stability. Hence, accession of even a small plaque of capitulum at times will lead to coronal plane instability, more so if MCL is torn or stretched. For taking a proper AP and true lateral view of the elbow, shoulder should be at the level of elbow as shown on your right. And the way it is done on the left is absolutely wrong. Most of the time is done like that. On a perfect lateral view, ulna will overlap on radius and capitulum as shown in the x-ray here. And your wrist should be slightly higher than the elbow to compensate for normal cubitus valgus and thumb should be up. And please do not forget to take the x-ray of the forearm and the wrist. There may be surprises there and you may miss a fracture. The 72-year-old female had a fall on elbow, what looks like a simple fracture capitulum, and the surgeon may think that he has to just pass two headless compression screws. On a CT scan was found to be a very comminuted fracture of capitulum and anterior part of the trochlea, both proximally migrated and rotated. I think CT is mandatory to treat any intraarticular fracture at any joint level. It will show you how many fragments are present. Are there any depressed articular fragment? Will help to decide the right approach and the right implant. If fracture is non-comminuted, you can certainly get away by using only headless compression screws. But if there is comminution, you ought to use plate and screws and buttress the comminution. If you sit on the console, you can even measure the size of the capitular and trochlear fragments on CT console. You should keep mini frag set ready and 2.4, 2.7, 3 mm, 4 headless compression screws and other smaller screws ready. People are often fond of passing AP screws, claiming that they protect posterior soft tissue and better preserve blood supply, but that's not true. Posterior entry screws are found to be biomechanical superior to AP screws. AP screws damage articular cartilage and compromise stability often by splintering the fragment. Most of the people are using 3.5 or even thicker screws, which are really bad proposition. Ring proposed to use divergent screws, which give better rotational control. And there is decreased risk of iatrogenic splintering if you use 2.4 millimeter multiple screws in different directions. Headless compression screws, they are simply superb. They leave no outside prominence. They avoid impingement and achieve excellent compressions. Please keep a set of them ready. This paper in 2006 claimed that Acutrec screw is better than Herbert screw. Acutrec in any case is not available in India, I think. But Helfet and one other author did not agree with this. And they found Herbert screw to be as effective as Acutrec. The older classification of these injuries were given by Brian and Moray, where type 1 is a large osseous piece of capitulum, which can be fixed with headless compression screws or any leg screw. Type 2 was a thin articular flag, which separates with little subchondral bone. Type 3 was a severely comminuted multifragmentary fracture, and Mackey later on added the type 4, where the fracture is extending medially to include the lateral part of the trochlea. That gives a double bubble sign on the lateral view. As you can see here, the yellow line is because of the trochlear shadow and the red line is because of the capitular shadow. The newer classification is given by Doberle. It's certainly better. It helps to plan the surgery and prognosticate the fracture outcome also. Type 1, where there is fracture, shear fracture of the capitulum only. Type 2, where the fracture involves capitulum in the lateral half of the trochlea, but that's a single piece, as you can see here, it's one piece. And type 3 is where capitulum and the lateral part of trochlea both are fractured, but they are also separated from each other. For all these types, 1 to 3, type A doesn't have any posterior comminution, as you can see here, while type B in all these three types has a posterior comminution. This excellent study clearly showed that presence of posterior comminution adversely affects the outcome. Once there is posterior comminution, you are expected to use locking plates and mini frags and buttress the comminution. Range of motion achieved is only moderate. 
the functional scores were poor and the complication rate also shoots up from 29% to 64%, which includes a higher reoperation rate in comminuted fractures. The treatment options are open reduction and internal fixation, excision, total elbow and arthroscopic reduction and fixation. We'll see each one of them has a definite place. Most of the time you are able to open reduce and fix these fractures if you are adept at treating them. My workhorse approach is an extensile lateral position. I do them on the in the supine position with the preferably nowadays with a stride to nicket. My incision is from uh, lateral supracondylar ridge here about five to six centimeter above. It goes up to the lateral epicondyle and then three centimeter distally towards the he radial head. What plane I take depends on the nature of fracture as we see the cases will know. This is the same 74 year old female with comminuted capitulum and trochlea operated by this extensile lateral approach. The plane was developed between biceps and triceps proximally. Here goes the anterior muscles taking the neurovascular bundle with this anteriorly posterior peel of the triceps. You should always keep the pro forearm pronated to protect the posterior interosseous nerve. LUCL is here. So if it's not already fractured with the lateral epicondyle, you should protect it and work anterior to the LUCL. You should not damage it. My spike is superior still. Don't ask your assistant to hang on this. You may damage the ulna now. So it should be only intermittent retraction. Capitular fragment, it, now you can see, is proximally migrated, rotated, encroaching on the coronoid fossa. This is the CT image of this bony piece. You have, this capitulum is practically devoid of all soft tissues. So dissect it and keep it on the table. Unless you do that, you will not be able to see the trochlear fragment. Once you keep it on the table, you can see the trochlear fragment, which is proximally displaced, rotated, and is encroaching on the coronoid fossa. So now, you start pushing this trochlear fragment with your thumb or a blunt periosteum with the protection of gauze piece there and gently extend. Once you partially extend the elbow and try to push it, this fragment will go and sit in its bed. You have pushed it down. The anterior trochlea you can see in this picture is almost reduced. You check the reduction proximally at the level of coronoid fossa and distally at the level of articular surface. You can see that articular reduction very well. In this world, the capitular piece which you have kept on the table will fit into and now you start fixing them. So my first wire starts proximally at the level of humeral metaphysis. We keep this elbow on two or three towels so that it's slightly above the level of the rest of the table. So my first wire starts proximal to distal like this. This is posterior to anterior. My entry point is in the metaphysis posteriorly. And I'm trying to hit this sheared trochlea anteriorly. So my fingertip is there and my wire is tip is end to come out somewhere near the anterior shear fragment here. So this is my first wire. The similar second 1.5 millimeter wire gives me rotational stability for this trochlear reduction. Then there is a third wire which goes from the fractured surface of the trochlea and I can bring this wire out on the medial column, intact medial column, up to the fracture side. Then I fit my capitulum in this void here. This anterior posterior wire is the fourth wire, which is subsequently replaced with a 2.4 millimeter. So this wire is 1.8. You can subsequently replace it with 2.4 millimeter headless compression stroke, front to back. After all this, I hold my reduction with a towel clip like this. and use a lateral column plate for the distal humerus. This is a locking plate with a flange. In this plate, I pass the distal and the lateral screw always first because if you pass this screw in the right place, your plate position will always be correct for rest of the screw. If you want to move this plate up or down or medially, you can still make amends here. So this screw has to be perfectly placed and should be happy with the position of this screw. Then rest of the screws will fall in place. More screws pass as you can see there. And then we take a 2.4 millimeter locking plate, which is used for radial stolite. 
this plate is twisted about 60 degrees so that screws in this distal fragment they go lateral to medial and in the proximal fragment where my arrow is, cursor is the screws go front to back anterior posterior so this is my final construct and then you check the range of motion on table this is the final picture all the views good reconstruction and we mobilize these patients from day one though there is a slab for about two to three weeks till stitches come out but patient takes out the slab every day and morning and evening does the exercises this lady went on to become absolutely normal another patient nice. you can have a fractured lateral epicondyle with injury to lateral collateral ligament complex 49 year old male fall on for outstretched hand no neuroscopic deficit this is a city lateral column is severely comminuted you can see that lateral column is all gone there are so many pieces there medial column is intact as you can see here lateral part of the trochlea also is shattered same extensile lateral approach here lateral epicondyle is attached to the lucl complex this is one piece with avulsion of bony chunk it is reflected distally now you are seeing the capitulum having done that capitulum is again freed and kept on the table lateral part of the trochlea is displaced proximally and rotated again pushed down as we saw in the first case getting reduced same steps repeated 1.8 or 5 or 1.8 mm k wires pass from this fractured surface of the shear trochlea from the fracture surface, you fix this to the intact medial column. It starts here and you bring it out on the anterior side, intact medial column. You pass one more K wire and these are the wires from the humeral metaphysis giving stability to, to the shear trochlea. Then you fit capitulum in this void here. Now comes the capitulum in its bed. Head radius is seen but annual ligament is not cut. It is just seen there and now you can advance the two K wires. These two K wires which you have brought out on the medial column, you can pass through the, uh, these wires and bring them out on the lateral side. That com completes my articular reduction. When you reduce the LUCL with the comminuted lateral epicondyle in this place here where it belongs and there are two thin wires, 1.5 millimeter wires fixing fourth and the fifth wire, fixing this lateral epicondyle with the ligament to the humeral metaphysis. You can make a finally a tension band, thin tension band on this to hold it. The same lateral column plate. This is the guide wire I was talking about. The lateral and the distal most hole of this plate, I pass the screw first and this is a guide wire. So I check it. Can I go a little more distal? Can I go proximal, medial, lateral? Plate position is decided by this guide wire and all these screws through the distal part of the plate, they are passed without using a sleeve, they are passed wherever I think I want to hit the, bite the capitulum and the trochlea. That's a good bow. So I hit them. The screws do not lock 100%, but whatever locking they get is good enough for me to start mobilizing on day one. Then anti-glide plate was added. This uh, Helfet paper showed that it's an extremely effective way of strengthening the fixation in this area. This is how it looks on the AP. And again, a slab for about two weeks, intermittent mobilization from next day. This is day five, wound has settled. He has got so much of rain and three months the fracture has healed and he has got a full recovery of function. Fantastic. The another uh, approach which is talked about in the literature is anterolateral approach. The indication for that is fractures without posterior comminution. The advantage is there is no damage to LCL because you are pretty anterior. The claimed advantage is there is no extensor lag. There is excellent visualization of even medial part. The articular reduction is seen easily and better and screws can be passed easily perpendicular to fracture plane. Here, in this area, because you are going anterolateral, you are anterior to the brachial radius and you will have to explore and protect the radial now. You have to peel off brachialis after that, biceps and the brachialis. So you peel off brachialis medially to expose the capsule and 
then go to the fracture. The limitations of this approach are that because it doesn't expose the posterior area, if there is a posterior comminution, you cannot address that with this approach. There is a small, very small risk of injury to radial nerve, about say five to six percent. But both these patients in the Raju Vashya series and one Tau series, one patient had radial nerve palsy out of 15 or 16, and both recovered without doing anything. Papers have described a two incision technique combining the lateral and the medial for fractures with extreme medial extension. Incisions are over the supracondylar ridge, medial and lateral, and you work from both the ends. <coughs> On the lateral side, don't forget to stay anterior to LUCL. <clears throat> there are papers describing the anterior approach. Three centimeter incision is taken at the elbow crease between biceps and the neurovascular bundle. And then you make two windows in the capsule here. Lateral to the neurovascular and medial to the neurovascular. And make a longitudinal cut in the capsule. You address the re relevant part of the articular reduction and pass headless compression screws directly. Again, this approach cannot be used if there is combination of the posterior cortex there. But our experience is that if you go on doing these fractures more and more, then even if the fracture is going very far medially, you can use extensile lateral approach, master that approach, you will be able to see right from lateral extreme lateral to extreme medial. This fracture is going right across. You can see here, there is comminution. This is his, her CT. Posterior cortex is having a small crack, but it is in position. Olecranon fossa is clear, so you don't have to do anything uh, posteriorly. But there is a comminution of the trochlea. There are so many pieces in the trochlea there. Same steps repeated. Trochlear fragment has been pushed down. Again, the same K wire steps are repeated. This is the metaphysial K wire, which is holding the trochlea. And then we start passing screws from a uh, wires from front to back. So my first wire was somewhere here. This is my second wire. And then I pass more and more medially the third wire. So these are the K wires going from front to back, fixing the trochlea to the posterior part, trochlea and the capitulum to the posterior intact column. And then we started replacing them one by one. One more tip is when you are passing, replacing this capitular K wire with the headless compression screw, because it's only single wire, it tends to rotate. So you have to use a clamp. Put the prong of the clamp on the capitulum here and on the posterior intact cortex so that when you replace this K wire with the headless compression screw, it doesn't rotate and disturb your reduction. So this clamp is holding it like this. You replace the K wire with the headless compression to 2.4 mm. And now you can see that there are five headless compression screws total. Uh, sir, where exactly this Hohmann clamp is? Pardon? How far medially? How far medial is this Hohmann clamp? This clamp is wherever you are passing the screw. You just uh, bite it anteriorly and the posterior. So that your fragment doesn't lose the reduction. It's only gentle. You don't crush that. The piece is very small. You don't crush. You just hold it like this. This. This is the anterior prong of the clamp. And this is posterior. Not, not clamp. This woman's clamp. If you Hohmann want to is on the medial the, column. It is on the medial so how, much, how much medial you can go? And where and you so, rest that tip? I am showing you this much medial you can go. <laughs> there are okay. five. Lateral to medial. So it just need, need once you flex the elbow, you can see more medially. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So uh, constantly somebody is uh, flexing and extending the elbow. You have to strike a balance. Huh? You can't go even. But you don't need to go more medial than this. There are five of them. And right, sir. then it was buttressed with a lateral column plate, as which we saw just now. And this is day five, wound settled, she's fine. She's comparatively middle-aged lady, not so osteoporotic, and she has got the full function. Here, the fracture was going too far medially, but the posterior cortex was absolutely intact. There was no crack even there. So this was again operated by same approach. You master only one approach, that is enough. Here also you can see, these are multi-directional screws proposed by ring thin screws, different directions, four of them. 
you don't want to go any more medial than this what is shown here this is two medial and because there was no posterior comminution only screws two or two weeks of protection in a slab and only scs will suffice here and he's got a full range at times you will have to use posterior approaches olecranon osteotomy when there is significant medial extension of the fracture or there is significant posterior comminution double layer rickmans posterior approach and olecranon osteotomy for all type 3 and some of the bad type 2 fractures the only contraindication for doing an osteotomy is older patient where you may have to resort to total elbow arthroplasty but a review of literature multiple papers tell us between extensile lateral and olecranon osteotomy there is absolutely no difference in outcome the all these papers they have compared results of two approach there is no difference this is our young male patient fresh fracture type 3b comminuted trochlea capitulum there is a split depressed fracture of the head radius and there is a comminuted olecranon some pieces are floating around so this is a ct scan here there was no question the Olecranon osteotomy already the fracture has done. So we chose the posterior approach in lateral position. You can see that the ulna now is contused. It wasn't dissected anymore. We had two tensions of transposing it. You can see that there are two big pieces of lateral part of trochlea which are free. They go on the table. Then more pieces, third piece is also there. Then three or four assistants and surgeons, they were trying to find out which piece will fit into. Finally, we arranged them. This is the right trochlea. We constructed on the table. This is the paper which says that the table. There is too much of disturbance. Can, can you make it mute, please? On table reconstruction of the capital and trochlea gives excellent results. Then you rotate the shaft internally to see the trochlea 360 degree and fix this lateral part of the trochlea. Pankaj, Pankaj, please mute it. Dr. Pankaj, please make it mute. Then you rotate the shaft internally to see the trochlea 360 degree and fix lateral part of the trochlea to medial column. This is what we had done. We had reconstructed it on table, brought it here, rotated the shaft. This Varbrugge is rotating the sh shaft so we can have a 360 degree view back to lateral side to front. Complete trochlea is seen. You fit it into this, pass these K-wires, and then you pass two or three more K-wires to fix this lateral trochlea to the metaphysis there. So these were the wire number one and two. Then these were wire number three and four. And these are three and four, fixing the trochlea to the metaphysis there. This trochlea was crushed. So, so much of the cancellous graft from the anterior uh, uh, lie crest could be filled into this, packed into this, we pointed it. Then there was a small third piece of trochlea which was kept on the table. So this comes and sits into this place and this is the buried K-wire, lost K-wire. This is one mm K-wire which is having a threaded tip. You don't pierce the cortex here. It's, the wire tip is threaded. So you just pass it good enough to engage this piece and keep it in the place there and then cut it and hammer it. Forget about it. You can see the depressed head radius, the annular ligament is seen but not cut with the joystick there, periosteum there. This piece was elevated and then subsequently fixed with two headless compression screws. So head radius is fixed now. This is the temporary reduction of the distal humerus. And then you reduce lateral epicondyle, buttress everything with a plate which we saw just now, the way we do it. And then Olecranon is fixed with a TBW and LCP. You mobilize this patient from day one. You can see the amount of soft tissue injury that he has got there. And nine months down the line, he has got a full range of motion. I have not inserted the video, but there is a video showing him having a full range. Total elbow may be indicated if fracture is unrepairable. Unre especially in a patient more than 65 years 
old or patient has pre-existing arthritis. In the Mekis paper, there were better functional outcomes in total elbow group compared with Orif group at two years. In their series, 25% and one out of four patients in open reduction group had to be subjected to total elbow intraoperatively because there was severe combination or the surgeon couldn't get a good fixation. So the message is avoid osteotomy if total elbow is anticipated at all. But the results of these experts for total elbow, they are not matched by most other papers. Arthroscopy has a place. If there is a very small flack of bone, you can excise it arthroscopically. Or if there is a solid chunk, non-comminuted, minimally displaced, then you can do arthroscopic reduction and pass a headless compression screw for type 1A. Arthroscopic reduction and percutaneous headless compression, only two cases. So there are isolated case series, one or two cases done by arthroscopy. Complications, they are innumerable. You can have elbow contractures, stiffness, which is the commonest complication. About 10% can go into non-union. Ulnar nerve injury is not uncommon. So is the radial nerve injury. HO can form in 4%. Indomethacin, I don't use. It's highly controversial. People go on using it because that's the conventional wisdom. But new, uh, newer literature suggests that probably it doesn't really make any difference. Post-traumatic arthritis is common. And of course, infection can ruin any good orthopedic surgery. This young patient, road traffic accident, nicely reconstructed for a very comminuted injury, as we saw in some of these patients. Uh, good reconstruction, but day 12, he came back with infected wounds, which were washed, debrided, six to eight weeks of antibiotic. We controlled the infection, retained the hardware, but at 11 months, he had only this much of range under anesthesia also. So we removed part of his hardware, not complete hardware, and did an arthrolysis and achieved full range and drop postoperatively. Finally, at one and a half to two years, has got a satisfactory range, but not full range. You can have AVN of the trochlea and cap uh, capitulum. You can have pain, valgus instability, and tardy ulnanopause. You can even get DRUJ subluxations after excision of a supposedly very small, unfixable fragment. The radius will migrate upwards as happens with uh, sometimes with isolated head radius excision. So you can have a DRUJ issues there as is shown in these three papers. If I achieve a stable fixation, I keep them in a slab for about one week to take maximum two weeks till suture removal. But almost all the patients we start mobilizing on day one. The dressing and the slab part is separate and the relatives, they are taught to remove the slab make him do the exercises, range of motion exercises, and again, put the slab back. Suboptimal fixation, I'll put them in a hinged elbow brace. If there is a significant LUCL injury, I mobilize them in pronation. If there is a MCL injury, I will mobilize them in supination. Flexion contracture in early post-op, around say four to six weeks, they are having a flexion contracture, then turnbuckle splints, they are useful. And you can use thermoelastic splints also and the bands to improve the uh, range of flexion. Thank you. Any questions? Nitin, sir? No, sir. Fantastic talk, sir. Really great, sir. The cases you have produced and the results you have shown now and the way you are treated, sir, mesmerizing. Congratulations and thank you, sir. Oh, no, as it's not like that. About say seven or eight years back, we uh, messed up with a 65-year-old lady. And she Are you she did not really do it uh, the way it should be done, but then it hurts. So slowly we mastered it now. Yeah. Now Nitin we do yeah. With the French is too comminuted, you size something? The coronoid or not? No. Uh, you don't throw any unless the piece is really inconsequential. 
if it's fixable as you saw that trochlear piece it wasn't very big piece but uh, it was fixed with a lost k wire lot of work is done on the console as dr tanna used to say that x ray will be there on the view box for two or three days if there is a difficult case before the patient comes on table he will just go on planning the surgery so the lot of planning is done on the console you should get a ct scan with very fine cuts our ct scan wala does probably 0.2 mm cut and then the whole actually every ct scan machine can do the same thing but they don't put in effort we don't ask them to really uh, give us excellent uh, images and this elbow is one joint where 3d is as important as the 2d so uh, he will substrate he will shoot, uh, whatever you want to do he will do all that jugglery on the console you can measure size of the fragment so you are fully prepared you are not missing anything on the table inventory is complete lot of lohar chal comes there so even very small pieces you can fix with threaded 1 mm k wire and cut them and bury them they are glued once it is they are glued and even if you mobilize only partially if you don't give a plaster and keep it in plaster for 2 weeks which is end of story if you give them even 10 to 20 degree movement the adhesions don't form then the range will increase every 3 5 days 4 5 days you can increase the range so in what fractures we can conserve the capitulum there is no conservative treatment for a displaced capitulum i have conserved only one or two patients both the patients were pregnant ladies and there was a lot of social pressure so rather than a ct scan i got an mri done uh, in those pregnant ladies you can do a mri safely after first trimester it is documented so uh, nobody can question you ki uh, something went wrong because of mri so mri was done mr chap gives excellent images and it was articular reduction was good so about 3 weeks of plaster but the fracture was hardly displaced in those patients so they got away it united sir uh, i will do the same thing if the lady was not pregnant i'll put a screw and uh, get a perfect reduction and mobilize immediately okay okay sir yeah. so those Nikita, g one person sir for entry glide plate where do you put and what is the purpose of entry your entry glide plate it basically gives me more purchase on those smaller fragments uh, i twist it such in such a way that my distal screws they are going from that shear capitulum and trochlea from the non articular portion the distal end of that plate fits onto the non articular portion on lateral side on the lateral side and the okay. twist is such that the metaphyseal screw proximally they are going front to back plus okay. it's a flimsy plate so uh, even if the contouring is not perfect the screws they just press it it's a 2.4 mm stolite process plate the buttress plate basically ah it's very but those screws are holding each other four of them two above and two below and i really get 30 and 40 screws 30 36 screws so the length is there the screws are thin but they are fairly long and in the uh, lateral column plate also those screws which are going they are not through the uh, sleeve they are pre hand drilling and even the cartilage is not damaged that wire just wants to come out of the articular surface and you can feel the vibration that is there so you just measure it and pass 16 18 24 whatever you measure it. so the idea is to have multiple points of fixation in those uh, sheared fragments and everything adds up so at the end you are confident enough that okay gentle movement will not hurt but we don't show any heroism the uh, plaster is not a problem plaster is there for about say 14 days or till sutures till the time you feel ki ha okay is fine but they are mobilized and in gets comminuted fractures uh, if the fragment is small can we uh, 
discard that fragment or uh, we have to fix it with a lost k wire it will depend on sir uh, i have treated fairly large number because no, not many people want to treat them so they send it so uh, hardly ever i have seen a piece which is excisable Ex excisable alone means excision of the capitulum or a trochlear piece alone cannot be excised in, in and we have uh, read almost all the papers published on this so excision is not talked about as a treatment modality in none of the series okay uh, sir but uh, there is so always it will be very very rare it will not be uh, something which will be part of the protocol if it's really that bad then in the expert sense it's total elbow older patient and uh, arthritic pre uh, existing arthritis or very osteoporotic bones then it will be a total elbow but recently there was a paper from shoulder uh, and elbow expert groups centers where the people are doing only elbow or shoulder so the complication rate was at two years in the those expert hands was something like 22 percent so you just imagine what will happen when people like us are doing who we'll do it only once in a year or okay. once in three years okay so, plus you can lift anything more than five kg you ask any indian patient not to lift more than five kg he is not going to listen to you like is there any tips to pass screw on the medial side like you you were very comfortable on putting screw from anterior to posterior on the lateral part of the trochlea you, you we find too difficult you do in flexion or in extension look the reduction comes with the extension yes sir okay. so you reduce it your clamp should be ready from the mera hat ulta padta hai from the lateral side your clamp should be ready here anterior posterior no. anterior posterior clamp so you yes. prong goes on that anterior surface on the posterior surface and you just gently hold it yes this is not so small that you can't tighten it like tibia or femur clamp no, yes. it just holds it and then i shoot my wires here this hand is slightly above elbow yes. is slightly above with the two towels from the table yes. Yes. so it starts here proximally hmm. and proximal to distal posterior to anterior hitting that shear piece and you you know that it will go there it's like acl jig jaisa thoda sa eyeballing karna padta hai so that wire holds that clamp you holds it and then you can flex it so once you flex it your retractor will give you a better vision but if you don't clamp you don't pass those two three k wires which we saw one two three four walas then as soon as you flex it will slip away so the reduction comes in the ex extended position you check your reduction through a small right angle retractor window here and a small clamp there some wires holding it then you flex it once you reduce and hold it with clamp and wires then flexion doesn't allow that reduction to slip so in flexion you can see far better so you, you pass wires from posterior you pass wire from posterior to anterior no no it's like this here it is starts here in the humerus metaphysis about 3 cm above slightly near the posterior part yes proximal to distal here this is proximal to distal lateral to medial yes lateral right. to medial you can see huh? and proximal to distal posterior to anterior, posterior. and you want you know ki this part of the articular surface you are going to bite okay so i don't even pierce the articular surface you know that is about to come yes so articular surface is not damaged plus you can exactly measure so you take smaller than that if you okay. measure 20 you take only 18 okay that is my graduate people pass anterior posterior screw there is very little lateral cartilage and you made a big hole in that cartilage if i pass my screw from back to front i don't damage any cartilage sir uh, in uh, uh, besides uh, 1 mm k wire and mm. min plates any other inventory to be kept ready distal radius plates they are extremely useful even mini uh, fragment specific plates of distal radius 2.4 headless compression screws even indian companies have copied very well the problem is with their screw drive so what cheating we do is that we ask a fellow to give us 
synthesis screwdriver and the Indian copies of that headless compression screw because one synthesis screw costs something like eight and a half thousand, nine thousand. The Indian screws are something like twelve hundred. Okay. So screwdrivers, they are not good. They have not succeeded in copying the screwdriver. Hand so, and foot, hand and foot implants, mini plates. Yeah, mini plates. So, very yeah, useful agree. for yeah, fixing you... those small fragments. Yeah. Even uh, two millimeter screws are available. So you have to really hunt. But you can do almost all of them with accent style lateral. So you learn only one approach and master it. Sir. G. How many times you have to go for arthrolysis when you have you are sure that you had a good reduction on the uh, 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 expected range of movement is not there because yeah. of patients. Uh, this thing non support to you, then how many times you have gone for arthrolysis in such patients? I, in this, uh, in last two months, I have done about four or five arthrolysis, but they were not these patients and not primarily treated by me. These patients, shear fracture, primarily treated by me, only that one patient I remember which got infected. Yes. That is the only one which ended up in arthritis. Otherwise, some of them have not received, got the last 20, 25 degrees. But that's okay. If they get from 30 to 130, they are happy. And full pronosopination. So they don't grumble. Nobody walks like this. 30 to 130 is good enough to do anything. This is proven in the papers. Sir, you said uh, you... Plus, make plus counseling. So, uh, just a minute. Counseling is important. When he comes, you, you promise him much less than what finally he will get. So... He has already gone to two or three people who have said that Ye to gaya. So you, pro you are promising far more than that but I don't promise them the result which I get. So there is sir, less. Said, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry sir. Uh, yes. You said uh, you remove the slab every day and uh, yes. ask them to move. Dressing, so dressing, dressing is separate and the slab is separate. Okay. You apply crepe bandage over the this one? Uh, yeah. 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 They are taught how to do it. It's not very difficult. And nowadays, so those uh, uh, imported slabs which have come ready-made, they are yes. very easy to remove and bandage it with, uh, and they are very strong also. Many okay. of these were gypsonas, but those imported slabs, they are very handy. Uh, I give a hinge brace. Uh, yeah. This is about 1800 rupees. Yes. Tynor company. It has two dials on medial and lateral side. That means you can lock uh, at the degree what you want. If you want a 30 to 60 degree range of movement, you can lock the uh, brace for that much movement. And gradually you can go on increasing if you don't want or if the patient doesn't want that plaster. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Sir, G -G, uh, I was not aware of that we get a hinged uh, ROM brace for elbow because so we you can uh, Google. Knee. Just yeah, I not, Google. I not make it. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Tanor is now almost everywhere. And the first patient which we really messed up, that lady also, after three, four months of hard work, we realized that, okay, we made a mistake by opening it from behind. Our assessment, reading of the CT was not very accurate. Fine. So the easiest thing would have been that you just knock out the lateral epicondyle, take the LUCL completely with that, big chunk and then you can just open the book as in the last patient I showed that the trochlea can be fully distal humerus can be 180 degree rotated so you are seeing the back and the front but uh, that time we were like duckons we had no clue what's happening we knew that the reduction is not perfect uh, purchase of the screws is borderline is not Okay, it, it wasn't up to our satisfaction. So, if any time you have opened it the wrong way and you are fumbling, then you just do a lateral epicondylar osteotomy, take a proper chunk, and the whole lateral complex you can dissect and shift it. Then you will be able to see the front of the humerus, back and the front both.
Sangeet has got a very, very good case. Late reconstruction of the same type of fracture. We can see that. It's fantastic. And he has covered some new points also. Sangeet? Yeah, should I show that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. get it. No? It's the same thing. I think Saab is taking a break. I, I don't see him there. Plus, that's a fantastic case. And that too, a Mal United one. Mm -hmm. Plus, the continuity will be there. No? Okay. I stop sharing. Yeah. So, this was a diamond merchant, 35 years old, right handed, and had a vehicular accident. Am I audible and seen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, this was in 2018, huh? uh, November 2018. So, this is how was his CT picture where you can see what Asim has spoken. The lateral coat, this is on the right side is an image which is from behind where you can see the entire lateral condyle is comminuted. It is fractured. Apart from, if you see the left side picture, there is a shear fracture of the comminuted capitulum and the entire trochlea. It has moved in front. Okay. So, this is how it was fixed. So, is it okay? No, sir. Any comments? No, sir. sir, capitulum is lying in front. Yeah. So, uh, the commonest mistake is if you uh, don't identify this fracture. Now, what do you see here in the lateral view? You see a double arc sign. So, that means this arc is of capitulum and trochlea. So whenever you see that, always your approach should not be this here. So what he has done is by a posterolateral approach or a posterior approach, he tried to fix and grab the capitulum without having seen it actually. Okay. Or even if you take an anterolateral approach here where or a caucus approach, you can barely uh, see the medial side. So unless you release the epicondyle, unless you release the lateral common extensors, you cannot reach the other side. Okay. And then what happened? Uh, the patient was at three months, uh, there was no stiff. Uh, even after physiotherapy, the elbow was not moving. There was no significant change in his range of movement. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to search other surgeons and everybody around uh, in South Bombay. And that is how he landed with us. And now what has gone wrong uh, in this? Whether the surgical approach was wrong, whether the fixation has not been adequate or understanding of this complex fracture has not been done. So it's everything, a combination of everything which has led to his mess. And now, like once you mess up the elbow, the reconstruction or revision of that elbow is very, very difficult. Asim has spoken about it, but in this classification, the most important and the significant factor is the posterior combination, which gives you the prognosis, okay, and the surgical approach. In our case, what was a fracture? The fracture was involving the entire capitulum and the trochlea. So, see this AP view of the 3D reconstruction. So, that has separated out anteriorly. Plus, it has a posterior commutation. The entire lateral condyle is comminuted. So, that is why it falls in a type 3 duberlase, which has the worst prognosis. Okay. So, now, what will be the surgical approach? Now, the dictum you should follow like this is, like when you have uh, <clears throat> these four types of uh, shear fractures, the one which involves 
uh, a where capitulum and part of the trochlea is uh, involved you can go ahead with the cocker's uh, approach wherein you preserve the lateral collateral ligament you don't have to open or you don't have to release the ligament and very often in this the common extensors and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament is still attached to the lateral epicondyle so you have to work just anteriorly and you don't have to reach the trochlea so with this approach cocker's approach you can fix the capitulum and part of the trochlea not the entire trochlea now when you have a extension of that means an extension of the trochlea on this side so, so in those situations like uh, uh, the second picture so you can take this approach that is a cocker's extensile approach where the incision is longer and here because it involves the entire epicondyle the common extensors and the elucial are already erased from the lateral epicondyle there may not be comminution and hence again your anterior or anterolateral approach of extensile cocker's where wherein you can see this much of trochlea right up to the medial hinge can you see this so you can do the fixation of the entire trochlea but not the posterior trochlea the entire capitulum and the complete shear fractures which may be up to the third picture on the top so when you have a extensive combination which involves the posterior surface of the trochlea also apart from what is seen in picture b there you require a olecranon osteotomy so if you have a simple capitular fractures you can get away with cocker's approach if you have a simple trochlear fractures you can get away by just extending the cocker's approach but you have a too much of combination you require a olecranon osteotomy approach now coming back to our case this is his post op ct now you can see at 3 months what has happened that entire fragment has got fixed it is fibrosed and it is now adhered anteriorly just above the Uh, coronoid fossa and inside the joint because of the comminution you can see what has happened there okay and this is his subtraction view where you can see uh, a big fragment of the trochlea is there then we have a comminuted capitulum fracture now here what we have done is we reexplored at 3 months we took a posterior approach did a olecranon osteotomy and even after olecranon osteotomy the exposure was inadequate so what we did was we completely flex the elbow but again even with that it was very difficult to visualize so the capitulum and trochlea fragments had migrated superiorly now when you do a olecranon osteotomy and completely flex in a fresh fracture you can actually reduce the trochlea completely the capitulum completely and have it fixed from posterior to anterior as asim has described but here what was required was we are not able, we were not able to see actually what was happening anteriorly so what we we do was as asim mentioned he does a osteotomy i do a release of a lateral ulnar collateral ligament that is i erase it from the epicondyle along with common extensor and after the surgery is over i stitch it back again with the help of a tunnel or with a, a anchor suture now you can see the video here okay so ha having released the common extensor now i can fix everything anteriorly okay so like this and then after doing the fixation i can then suture it back so only the medial collateral ligament is intact we have done a olecranon osteotomy and through the posterior approach we can actually work on or rotate the humerus and then see what is happening anteriorly okay so this is how it was done so this was the fracture which has migrated superiorly so this was brought back by careful dissection uh, releasing the soft tissue the fibrous tissue and this is how the trochlea was first reconstructed on your left is a ulnar nerve okay 
and the yellow arrow it is that much space we got just because we release the lateral collateral ligament and the common extensors and after disengaging the fragments we pulled it down reduced it first the trochlea and then now we are trying to reduce with the towel clip the capitulum so this is how it was so the trochlea was reduced with the two lax screws and the capitulum then we used a posterior plate this is how it was reduced okay so this is how it looks like um, some there is a some defect which we filled up with cancellous bone there was a cartilage loss but this was not the anterior side this was the uh, lower side or the posterior side where there is very little role of capitulum a uh, very little role of the cartilage so this is how we place the plate posteriorly after having reconstructed and then the released lucl which was on this side was sutured by uh, at the isometric point along with the common extensor this is his post op x ray and uh, uh, this is how it looks like after uh, suturing and then completing the fixation of the olecranon osteotomy this is on table what we have got he has a good extension okay and then a complete flexion okay. he is this 20 degree short of extension and a complete flexion that is how we got the range of movement and this is his post op x ray at one year this is at about sorry this is at about immediate post op x ray this is at 6 weeks where you can see the trochlea is reconstructed the capitulum uh, the radial is is in front of the capitulum and this is at 6 months where the entire articular block and the fragments have all healed and he left abroad for some work and from there he had send a x ray at 6 months i have lost him after that so at 6 months this is how we he could get which is a fairly acceptable range of movement considering that um, it was a 3 months old stiff elbow and uh, where it was a redo surgery so this was about that case which uh, asim mentioned great great so uh, two things are important he also mentioned your mobilization has to be as early as possible the blood clot they form the fibrin they form the fibrosis and that leads to stiffness so your fixation for that your fixation has to be stable okay so stable fixation mobilize early and your results as regards the flexion extension will be dramatic any questions uh this first yeah. case sir if you primarily fix this fracture then you do olecranon osteotomy then you don't need or you will do with osteotomy no here uh, there was a posterior combination uh right there is an approach is you already mentioned See, there is a communication of the posterior trochlea with lateral communication then we have to go with the olecranon osteotomy right that diagram which i had shared so that is explains you what is the approach we should take when you have a combination of the posterior condyle and the entire like uh, duberlez 4 or where you have a extensive combination of the uh, capitulum and the entire trochlea is involved so you require a posterior approach a olecranon osteotomy and then uh, you can work from posterior it requires posterior even in slightest doubt see why do we need a posterior plate because you cannot put a lax screw from posterior to anterior or anterior to posterior so what does the plate do it gives you a scaffold on which you can build the trochlea okay am i clear to you yes okay because that segment is very small sangeet sir yes uh how did you bring those uh, 
probably migrated capitulum and trochlear fragment down okay. after three four months with a skin hook or something like no, because there, there must be fibrosis so there is a dental hook uh, dental. i think which i have shared when you were here in trauma con okay that is one instrument you require small curettes uh, basically the ent surgeons they use it then additionally small osteotome straight as well as curm curb so you go in the fracture plane gradually you start maneuvering use a curette to clean it uh, go on working on anteriorly because that segment is very small and we don't want to lose any cancellous bone from that fragment okay and anteriorly neurovascular structures are also nearby so you cannot extend much into anteriorly no they are far anterior they are far anterior we 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 are close to the bone we are not going in the capsule on the anterior side and there is a thick capsule which always protects you is actually much thicker in the late cases or yeah. because of the fibrosis. fibrosis yes and second thing is articular reconstruction is paramount as those two papers one by the rudy and another by sen it shows that uh, on table reconstruction at least in the upper limb and at times i have done it in the lower limb also for the distal femur and uh, upper tibia even the free pieces if they are put back properly slowly they will revascularize but the articular reduction has to be perfect that is sacrosanct okay sir ji sangi sir yes i am there before doing this surgery what do you explain to the patient what we are, are the possibilities of all yeah we are going to see he was stiff okay. and uh, you know like at 35 what can you explain him so uh, he is aware that he does he is unlikely to get movements he has tried for 3 months and only thing is we are bringing back the fragments so that your future you know even if he goes for a total elbow uh, you know like something we have reconstructed on which uh, so there will be fibrosis uh, and he can get back at least some stiffness will not be there he'll get back some range of movement and what was the chances of myositis uh, see if it has not occurred during the first surgery the chances are very rare that it will occur in the second surgery and so uh, to get see only reducing those fragment was not the end of the surgery we have reduced uh, we have released the capsule we have cleared the olecranon and the uh, coronoid fossa so that on table uh, you can see that video here he, he had almost normal range of movement yeah yeah so just 10 degree short so they subsequently lose it okay not all of them will get a complete range of movement even though you have it on the table so some of them those who don't do good physiotherapy some like who are reoperated the fibrosis forms again and they don't get the full range of movement Sang sangeet your patient if it was a local patient from bombay yeah who could be in touch with you almost fortnightly twice a month no he no would have got far more better range yes so it, it's not only good surgery it is lot of work is done later on by the patient also and the physio also no yes. no it is it is the follow ups regular yeah. follow up of the patient now if he disappears for 6 weeks and then comes back yeah no, that is not going to work at appropriate time call him every 2 weeks check yourself how much range of movement is getting and why he is not getting if he has a pain then he required a more doses of analgesic the aim is to get him as much range of possible and what you explain and what they understand and what they do these are three different things plus physiotherapy for elbow is absolutely different ball game 90% of the physiotherapists i find they do passive stretching is a very gentle art so off late i just teach the patient tell him that don't let any unknown physiotherapist touch your elbow only your family members or you yourself will do it 
and the family That's right. members, they are not doctors they are not physiotherapists but they understand it they are made to learn it and then they do it because they cannot harm the patient yes most physiotherapists they are uh, horrible or or it does, more, it does more harm and the myositis i have seen only in two patients they were bad patient two or three patients in last 30 40 years having done enough elbows complex elbows only two patients they were diabetic long standing alcoholics and absolutely gone case so only those two or three patients i remember where there was a significant movement obstructing mechanical block due to myositis myositis is more often talked about is not it doesn't really happen that much because even if you speak to the physiotherapist to the patient himself they'll all tell i'm doing very well and actually they are move, doing movements at the shoulder which they are misinterpreting as the movement at the elbow joint i am able to do everything i am able to eat but they are doing it at the shoulder so that is why a supervision and every two weeks follow up where you assess and then uh, give additional exercises with weights against resistance with the theraband is a must whenever you have such patients uh, with complex injuries of the elbow pre gabapentin also helps a lot uh, pre gabapentin and gabapentin and uh, one of my plastic surgeon uh, he said that now the developing now in this patient i am talking about now uh, even though i on the table i have got a full range but that didn't continue post operatively so the response of fibrosis is a autoimmune response like some make the females young females will get excellent range of movement males will not get it so uh, the response to fibrosis is different and uh, basically it is a uh, he says the plastic surgeon says give them with uh, anti allergic uh, any medicine so that is like allegra or something like that so that reduces some amount of fibrosis whether it is right or wrong i don't know but uh, uh, it is a good suggestion Uh, and some of these patients around say 3 weeks if uh, he is losing range and uh, by that time sutures are out i know that i have given antibiotic only for one day it is non infected then small burst of 5 uh, 6 days 10 days of steroid short maybe Uh, 20 bd for 3 days 10 mg bd for 3 days and then 10 od for 3 days something like that so in that early period steroids have multiple uh, things to help anti fibrotic action anti inflammatory they reduce edema they are excellent painkillers so that helps uh, around between 3 to 4 weeks if i am not doing well then sometimes i use steroids for short periods asim sir ji is there any role of endocap sr in this case endocap i have extensively heard tycoons i don't use endocap at all is like any other anti inflammatory diclopera or aciclopera or nimupera or etoricoxib and parastamol uh, and far more toxic and is highly is more of a myth and uh, that it prevents ho it doesn't prevent it this for for sure and is far more uh, side effects than compared with other anti inflammatory they are as good as or as bad as other so it's, it's a lot of role in myositis ossification no that is that's a myth it's a myth the it's current myth. scientific evidence suggests that uh, it is a placebo yeah Oh. i'll put it that way so whether you give it or you don't give it it does not make any plus, difference plus the toxicity is far more than uh, etoricoxib or aciclopera or those things we saw this anti inflammatory action is far more toxic more gi yeah, i am going to i am going to nagpur how many dd fellowship is coming to nagpur for that foot for the conference foot and ankle, ankle. i think only harjot is there oh he is from my 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 neighbor acha 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 
So that is what he has conveyed in the group. So he is not coming. Okay, then. So we have some cases on fracture dislocation. So should we do that, Asin? Yes, you show one case. I will show another uh, uh, complex fracture dislocation. I'll just load it by the time you sh uh, show it. Okay. okay. I'll just find out. You show the first one. I'll get the one. Uh, am one I sharing quarter, the screen Major. now? Pardon? Am I sharing the screen? Yeah. No, no, you are not sharing. No, you, we are seeing your screen, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, uh, it was written there. You are, we were seeing there. Okay. Uh, yeah. This goes. This goes. So, am I seen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, a small topic on fracture dislocations of the elbow. Now, <clears throat> what was a decade before was a different surgical treatment. And in last 10 years, things have tremendously changed as regards understanding of fracture dislocation. So, we now are addressing these elements that is chronic instability, post-traumatic arthrosis and poor uh, functional outcome. Uh, so these have changed in last decade. So these fracture dislocations, uh, there are four variations. Either you will have an elbow dislocation associated with radial head fracture, a terrible triad injury, uh, andromedial coronoid fracture with dislocation, and fourth is a transolecranon fracture dislocation. So these are the four situations where you will have fracture dislocations. So we start with the first one where we have a dislocation with the radial head fracture. Here, the coronoid, it's not a terrible triad injury. The coronoid is intact. Okay. So simple radial neck fracture, but it is associated with uh, elbow dislocation. So what do we need in this is uh, refix this fragment of the radial neck, head neck. And then, so... Why there is a dislocation? There is a disruption of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. So this is how it is repaired. The radial head is fixed. The radial head is fixed with a plate. And that is the range of movement on the table. This is a suture anchor for suturing the common extensor and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament which is the cause of the elbow dislocation. And that is her x-ray at six months. And this is her x-ray and the range of movement at uh, some time, I think one year or so. So why do they get such a good range of movement? Because it is not a classical terrible triad. There are only two elements involved, the radial head fracture and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament or the common extensors which is a cause for elbow dislocation. Now, whenever you are repairing the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, that has to be repaired at the isometric point. So this is the isometric point. With the help of a K-wire, you identify in a uh, lateral view where you are seeing the olecranon completely, the trochlea completely. That means the elbow joint you are able to see. And two millimeters anterior to the center of the lateral epicondyle is the area where you should put your suture anchor. If you don't have a suture anchor, you can make a tunnel uh, which has a adequate thickness and you can use a simple ethibond or a fiber wire instead of this suture anchor and the common extensors or uh, the lateral ulnar collateral ligaments which are attached to the epicondyle, now uh, they can be sutured back. Now, the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament has three parts. One is a radial collateral ligament, which goes from the epicondyle to the annular ligament. A second and most important is a lateral ulnar collateral ligament, 
which is from the epicondyle to the supinator crest and the third and the important ligament is the annular ligament which uh, basically the radial collateral ligament it uh, disappears over that annular collateral ligament so annular collateral ligament and the radial collateral ligament are not that important structure as far as the elbow stability is concerned so what we are concerned is about the L lucl the lateral ulnar collateral ligament and that is in this area okay so if you have a disruption of that you can see what happens in extension the elbow dislocates there is a unequal space between the trochlea and the olecranon but once you reconstruct you can see there is a uniform uh, joint space between the trochlea and the ulna okay so that is what you should aim for at the end of all your elbow surgeries you must take this view where you see a uniform joint space in flexion and extension in a lateral view another situation a 54 year old he sustained a uh, elbow trauma again the coronoid is intact he has a radial head which is comminuted okay it is in multiple fragments and the elbow is dislocated now here the surgeon what he has done is he has done the replacement surgery but he didn't address the lateral collateral ligaments so hence what has happened is obvious at on fifth day okay so uh, you need to repair so that is the reason you need to repair the lateral ulnar collateral ligament very well so that these dislocations which are associated with radial head uh, they are stable and they get back a expected range the second entity where you get fracture dislocation is a terrible triad injury sir has covered most of it but i have two cases which are different and that is why i am presenting them so here is the one uh, this photo artist 40 years old so he has a, a coronoid process a comminuted radial head okay and he was reduced in the emergency but it was unstable uh, you can see here the ulna and the trochlea are not reduced it is already laterally subluxated and this is his ct where you can see the coronoid fragment is a large coronoid fragment from the anterolateral side okay there is a comminution of the radial metaphysis there is no radial head fragment but the neck is comminuted and you can see so this is reduced but in extension it dislocates so this is how it was close reduced and then the radial head was fixed and the coronoid fragment was fixed by a k wire and we did a range of movement so can you see that the coronoid is fixed with a k wire and we are doing his complete extension the elbow is stable so that means that fragment is important as far as the stability of the elbow is concerned so that was replaced that fragment was replaced the k wire was replaced with a long screw okay and you can see this drill holes multiple drill holes here so these are for the repair of the anterior capsule so the k wire was replaced by the screw and additional fiber wire were used for suturing the anterior capsule so intro picture on your left side is the humerus this is the capitulum okay and that screw is fixing this fragment of the coronoid so with the cocker's approach you can get that much of exposure so that you can fix the coronoid process in its footprints okay so this is the capitulum that is a fixed coronoid with a screw and so the radial head what are the tips how do you fix it first use a temporary k wire assemble the fragments either outside or on the table and capitulum is a mold on which you can reconstruct how do you know whether your radial height is correct or not i'll come to that and after having fixed uh, all the three elements the radial head so you can see the capitulum is a mold so if you are in varus or valgus there will be abnormal opening so at the end 
you should get a good articulation between the capitulum and the radial head. And that is his range of movement. The elbow is stable. It is not dislocating. And this is his post-op picture. So about uh, suturing of the capsule, I'll come to it in the next case. So that is his range of movement at one year. He has complete flexion, complete extension. And again, the role of physiotherapy is here very important in getting a good range, good movement. That is his x-ray at one year. So the elbow where there was a terrible triad. So everything is reconstructed very well. The screw appears to be in the joint, but the profile is such that it is fixing that coronoid fragment and it goes from medial lat and it emerges out laterally. It is not over the radial head. So the protocol is fix the coronoid, okay, replace or work on the radial head, repair the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. And if medially it is uh, unstable, repair the medial collateral ligament. And if still the elbow remains unstable, use a fixator like this. So the coronoid fractures associated with disruption of lateral collateral ligament and typically uh, the radial head is preserved and the MCL is preserved. In this injury pattern, there is a subtle uh, elbow joint instability. And so most important is uh, how to identify them. Now, I'll come to it in the next case. So the anteromedial coronoid, uh, here, the anteromedial coronoid has two subtypes. The smaller subtype has two fractures, especially those which are less than five millimeters, which involve extreme medial side or the anteromedial side. And uh, they can be conserved if there is no associated injuries to the radial head or the uh, there is no instability. So now here is a case uh, where he had a fall on outstretched hand while driving the scooter. There was no dislocation. Uh, he had other injuries which are not, we are not discussing that. And this was his x-ray picture. Okay. So he was sent home. Uh, having diagnosed a chip fracture and discharged with the arm pouch and he was asked to do range of movement uh, regularly. The pain subsided, but uh, I was still not happy what uh, could be this fracture, whether it is from radial head or are we missing something else. So he came after eight days. He was not comfortable. The swelling was there. The x-ray picture was almost same, same. There was no dislocation. So I advised a CT scan at that stage and found out there was a radial head fragment which was lying outside and there was a coronoid fragment also. So uh, these small fragments should not be missed. Whenever you have them, please do a CT scan. It will reveal much more information. So this was again probably uh, elbow dislocation which got reduced himself. Okay. And that is his picture where you can see the coronoid process which is a very small fragment which is not fixable. Okay. And then on the lateral side you see a fluid in the lateral collateral ligament which is, uh, represents a collateral tear. So he had a radial head fracture, he had a collateral ligament tear on MRI and he had a coronoid process. So this is an element of a, a terrible triad, which classically doesn't dislocate, but you have to identify with appropriate investigations. If you miss them, they will end up in a significant stiffness. And under anesthesia, this is how we could demonstrate that. Okay, I cannot play this media. So this is the dislocation. You can see in this image, uh, the elbow is already dislocated. Okay. So this is his intra-op picture. Again, this movie is not playing. I don't know the reason. Okay. 
So here what was done is since we cannot reconstruct the coronoid, so what is what we do is we have to take a pull through suture and that is uh, drill a K wire and then introduce a needle or something or any instrument. I use an alligator forceps, which is about uh, less than two millimeters. And you can see here, I, I have taken a suture on the anterior capsule and one end of the ethibond I am feeding to this forceps or you can use a needle or any instruments by which you can pull through on the posterior surface of the olecranon. So this is taking a bite of the anterior capsule and the fragment, which is now, once you pull, will be on the uh, tip of the coron of the coron of the olecranon. So once you do that, the other end, again, you draw it. So So once you pull it, you can see the entire capsule is now uh, buttressing and preventing the posterior subluxation. So that gives a good stability to the elbow. And then uh, we have to identify the lateral collateral ligament tear. So this is the lateral collateral ligament, which is a thick band, which you cannot miss it. And that has to go over the isometric point which you have identified. So at this stage, we are not suturing the pull through suture. So first take suture the uh, uh, put an anchor at the isometric point, take sutures once you have done because uh, once you take a pull through suture, then the anterior space reduces where you cannot work on. So do the coron the coronoid and the capsular suturing at the last. So this is how it is reconstructed at the end. The elbow is stable. These multiple drill holes, what you see is for the pull through sutures. Okay. And that is tied over the posterior surface. So this is his x-ray at three months. And that is his range of movement at three months. So this is the brace which I was talking, uh, where you can control the flexion and extension of the patient. Okay. So trans olecranon fracture dislocation. I think uh, Asim has already covered. Have you Asim? There was a case there. Yeah. Uh, I think I have one of your cases. Yeah. So this is. This, this is the Sangeet. This is already you have covered. Yeah, I have covered. So this is. In detail. So I don't cover that anti uh, fracture dislocation. So I stop sharing. We can see one more case quickly and yes. wind up. Yes. Maybe yes. Next time. Yeah. You can go yeah. ahead. The, on the same leg. leg. Yeah. There's little different way of uh, complex fracture dislocation. A second. Yeah. This one. And slideshow. So it's almost a similar case, but a different way of fixing it. So am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. But uh, the screen yeah. is yeah, still it's showing your desktop, sir. Oh, the... I see. You open, open the PPT. Just a minute. I'll do that. It is showing the desktop? Yeah. Now? Yes. Slide... Now the slides are seen? Yeah, slideshow. Go to slideshow. Okay, I will just make it slideshow from beginning. Now it's seen? Yes. Yeah. So she is 55, female, fall from a school tea. She is a school teacher, I think. Fresh fracture was sent to me around day four or five. No neurovascular damage. So this was the injury. These were the scan images. We couldn't get better images. She came with this scan. So whatever processing we could do, that is all we had. Uh, the elbow is obviously dislocated. This is pro piece is probably coming from capitulum. And the head radius also is fractured, as you can see in these images there. And this is the capitular piece. 
so city wasn't as great as we will like it to be but we had to manage with this so this is it so now go back to the city yeah so you can tell us more about one joint is completely dislocated, dislocated. okay yeah. how so the cochlea yeah. is intact so this cannot be a shear fracture yeah is okay. a complex fracture dislocation yeah it involves the entire lateral condyle which has anteriorly the capitulum and there is a extensive comminution posteriorly yeah okay plus so, head radius also is gone again the capitulum is split into two yeah okay agreed right the major part of the trochlea is still attached to the distal humerus yeah. right okay so this is the understanding from the ct and you can see that the olecran fossa is more or less intact intact so now, posterior yes. approach is out yeah so here see uh, if you have to reconstruct the capitulum so you cannot use lag screw so somebody was asking why yeah. do we need a plate cutress plate so here you need to put a posterior plate on which you can fix the capitulum is it clear now this yes, is sir. a very classical yes. case asim yes. you can go ahead yeah so again a supine position prestrial tonique the same extensile lateral approach beneath subcutaneous plane injury itself has done lot of dissection there the moment you take skin and subcutaneous tissue and open this fascia there is huge soft tissue damage which itself has dissected so don't uh, remove so uh, soft tissue from the bony pieces first try to understand which piece is there and this bump beneath the medial side allows a varus stress at the elbow to open it like a book as sangeet showed you in one of his cases that he raised the lateral epicondyle uh, lucl complex and opened the whole elbow like a book so here the injury has done that at distal humerus metaphysis you develop the plane beneath the brachialis this is the brachialis wala plane here is the triceps wala plane this triceps plane is open only as much as is necessary to put the plate there not much more then you look for the anterior part of the capitulum in anterior soft tissue it was flying away actually it was way i think i had to take i did it about two two and a half years back so i don't remember the details but i had to literally take help of image intensifier to find out this piece the whole lateral ligament complex and the lucl this is seen here the whole lateral complex is in this soft tissue so just retract it you can have a nice good uh, view of the head radius and yeah now you can see the head radius this capitulum we found out it's devoid of soft tissue and rotated so we retrieved it from the anterior soft tissue here we have sort of partly repositioned the head radius not yet fixed it you release the annular ligament only partially as much as is very necessary to see the head radius reduction then we held the reduction of uh, head radius with uh, triangular configuration of 1.8 mm k wires and then you try to reduce the capitulum on the remaining part of the trochlea and the posterior thing here then you give a varus stress to open up the elbow joint and then take capsular stitch with five number fiber wire so you make a craco stitch in the whole lateral ligament complex which we had seen so bit by bit then you make a 2 mm hole in the proximal ulna in the bed of coronoid which sangeet was talking about that you make a hole and this is basically not to repair the chip tip fracture of the coronoid is basically to stitch the capsule and get stability for the elbow because on and that tip nothing is attached yeah, capsule yeah okay. yeah uh, so if you take a capsular bite that is good enough yeah uh, the uh, biceps brachii 
the brachialis is attached much more distally. One centimeter the, below the tip. Yeah. Below the tip. So past 18 days happened. And there is no need to and there is no need to get an accurate reduction of that tip of the coronoid. Agreed. Okay. Ra rather, there is no need to really suture that capsular stitch very tightly because that will reduce your movement. You have to ought to have like a total hip or a total hip, slightly few millimeter of laxity there. Right? That's absolutely fine. So these capsular stitches were pulled out with the help of a 2-0 ethylon, making a loop there. And then we reduced the head radius and fixed it with K wires in a tripod configuration, as you can see here. This is the tripod we constructed for the head radius. One transverse wire and two cross K wires. Then these K wires were replaced with headless compression screws, three of them to stabilize the head radius. If you dislocate the joint, it becomes easier to uh, work on the head radius. Capsular stitch in the coronoid is taken and brought out on the outer surface as you can see here, but it is not tight so far. That is the last thing we'll do in the end. So head radius reduced and fixed in a tripod configuration. There is no plate here. And then now you reduce the capitulum to head radius. Sangeet reduced the head radius to capitulum. In my patient, head radius was comparatively less fractured, easy to fix. So I reduced the head radius first, fixed it with a tripod configuration, buried the headless compression screw heads. And then I reduced my capitular piece to trochlea and the head radius. So reduction was vis-a-vis -vis head radius on distally and on the medial side to capitulum. Having done that, we realize that there is lot of gap there. So don't try to bring this capitular piece to the posterior cortex. Lots of bone in this area has been crushed. We did not remove this. It was crushed in this middle segment. So pack this void with the allograft or autograft or build up this void. Don't push this fragment. You will lose the reduction to trochlea. You will lose capitular reduction to head radius. So keep it in place. Hold it with temporary K wires as we have done this thin K wires there. Pack the void with bone graft, sometimes a chunk there, and then this is the temporary leg screws, and then there is the buttress plate, which Sangeet was saying that you but have to buttress the combination. So this graft and the combination has to be buttressed with plate. More screws there. Hold the distal articular reduction with a towel clip when you are passing these screws. Otherwise, you lose the reduction. Fix it with 2.4 mm, millimeter locking boards, multiple boards there. And capsular stitch is the last thing. Pass you a use the stitch. suture disc. Uh, that is, go back to the slide. One slide back. Yeah. For capsular suture. No, no. One ahead. Ahead. So yeah. you can see here the suture disc. Yeah. So if you don't want to tie a knot, you can use a suture disc. Uh, this is for capsular repair. For capsular repair, if you do it like Sangeet did it, I used to do it, then you have to make two tunnels and bring out two sutures. So rather than making two tunnels, I make a box stitch in the capsule and then make a 2 or 2.5 millimeter hole in the bed of coronoid so that both the threads can be brought out through the same tunnel. And then I tie them over an endo button here. Then you pass a traco stitch in the lateral ligament complex with a fine number fiber wire. So make a nice good craco, at least three loops here. Bring it up. So you got two ends of the five number fiber wire in the lateral ligament complex. After that, you pull on the capsular stitch here in the alna to check reduction of the joint. And finally, this is my capsular stitch being pulled. I have not yet tied it probably. Then pass posterior part of lateral ligament complex fiber wire through a tunnel in the lateral column. So the plate has head radius first fixed, first the capsular stitch taken, brought out but not tied. 
then head radius joint dislocated head radius temporarily fixed and then replaced with headless compression screw that part is over then you bring the capitulum in place pack this void bone graft buttress it with a plate and fill up the holes in the plate after that you pull the capsular stitch keep the joint reduce and assess the stability and then pass this lateral collateral ligament complex stitch through tunnels which sangeet was talk talking about you make two tunnels and then bring out this cracko stitch last thing is that you tie the coronoid stitch over and end over that so here is the patient this is the reduction these are more views check the full range of motion this is the ring so it should be congruous on table up to 30 degree if it is stable you don't have to open the medial side day zero evening she has got no plaster was given i think there is no plaster i see this is the range on day zero almost zero and this is the way relatives are taught just hold the arm don't allow them to move the shoulder and rest patient will do himself this is the day 7 this is the hinge brace tanors you can fix the angles 12 days 3 weeks don't allow a complete extension yeah initially yeah you can prevent it at 10 to it at 30 okay yeah 5 weeks 7 weeks and 3 months i think she got a full range 4 months yep 5 months amazing and she is a very rothla patient devare 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 all the time she was doing but she did it very cooperative all halla gulla but yeah so i had to invite her for a free consultation and a free x ray so that i get the latest follow up she is stressable so this is all about more cases may be next time i think we have overshot the time yeah we we probably and are 50. completing the upper limb now we will take rest also i think it's quite interesting okay so i think next time maybe yeah we conclude the session then yeah yes boss nice sir thank you nice very nice thanks sir good night good night, good night sir. sir from both the limbs Yes, very good cases, very good that results. That is all coming from Lotus Clinic, Doctor Panna's <laughs> School of Orthopedics. Sir is the boss. Yes, sir. I I worked with him for almost more than nine years. He's like a Bishma Pitama. Yes. Wow. Well. Thank good you, night, sir. sir. Good night. Good night. Good night, good all. Night, good night, sir. Good night. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Bye, sir. Sangeet, sir, bye.